<laughs> yes. Sugar, soda, and lots of caffeine. These are the ingredients chosen always before making a blog. But Mr. Caleb accidentally added an extra ingredient into the concoction. Super girliness. That is where the Powerpuff Girls vlog came in. Hey guys, this is My Profile is Great, and you know what? I already talked about the ponies. I already talked about the Disney characters. Why not talk about the Powerpuff Girls? Because that is the show on Boomerang that I think everybody secretly visits Boomerang to watch, or at least I do. I'm not going to judge the entire continent based off of, you know, my viewing habits. But I ended up discovering this show once again through my GF who was basically talking about it vaguely at some point, and I was kind of like, oh, you mean to tell me that Laura Voss worked on this show, and she had worked on that other show with the cute cartoon things. Yeah, I'll watch that. And so I ended up getting way too into it, and I think I probably scared her again, because it's kind of like, I don't think she's ever going to recommend anything to me ever again, especially if it's something kind of girly from her childhood, because chances are I will probably like it ten times more than she will. And I'll be like, did you see this episode? And she'll be like, no, I didn't. Please stop. Stop watching these shows. Damn you. I'm, I'm a horrible, horrible person that way. This show is absolutely, phenomenally super violent and cute at the same time, which I think makes the appeal, like, double appealing. There's something about seeing, like, really cute cartoon characters kind of just beating the crap out of things that makes me giggle. And this show does that very consistently while also being smart. This is one of those shows where you take the concept of, like, these three little superheroes who go out and they fight crime, and then they constantly twist it to do commentary on the people who are watching the show. One of the fun ones was the fact that they had this comic book fan who was actually super obsessed with the, um, with the girls themselves. And so he decided to start collecting them, the actual girls, because he had collected everything else involving them. So he made like this little action figure thing and then plastered them into it. And it was really kind of super disturbing. But I think it was a commentary, very kind of tongue-in-cheek about the audience the show was garnering, because that was another one of those shows, much like MLP later, that ended up garnering this male audience that kind of came out of nowhere, where people were sort of like, oh, we weren't expecting all these 30-year-old men to suddenly come in here and start watching this program. This is... This is very weird. We love them, but we're also going to make fun of them every single chance that we get. Which I always admire creators for doing that. Another fun episode is the one where the a concerned parent group ends up telling the Powerpuff Girls, you know what, you cannot be super violent anymore. We're going to have you sign this contract or else we'll sue the hell out of you. And under this contract, you cannot punch anyone, you cannot kick anyone, you cannot use any of your powers other than like seeing through things. What ends up happening is that the entire town and then eventually, like, the entire world gets overrun with supervillains because they can't beat the crap out of anybody. So, eventually, this parent group ends up, you know, they end up falling into a trap where they have to go and save them by the only means necessary. And it ends up that the contract gets voided. So, it's a... The creators of this show are not afraid to make fun of themselves and to make fun of the audience that is watching the show. Um, I think I have already spoken way, way too often already about what makes a good kids show and what makes a good kids show, and I'm going to repeat it again because I just love the sound of my voice. What makes it good is if you can sit down with your little girl or your little boy and watch it and you can get something out of it too and they get something out of it, and it's kind of like a mutual thing. And this is another one of those shows where they're probably not going to get all the little social commentary points about, you know, the creative process. There's another great one. I'm just going to list them off because, honestly, you can list off so many great episodes from this series that you'll end up going and talking way, way too much. But there was an episode with a documentary filmmaker, and it kind of does the Cloverfield thing. Um, I'm pretty sure Blair Witch Project had come out at this point. But it's basically him documenting the Powerpuff Girls and never being able to get a good angle at them. And he's basically this guy who just came out of film school trying to do this passion project of his. And he ends up, like, ruining his family life in the process. And it's not even about the girls, really. It's about this guy 
and the fact that he's shooting this really crappy documentary. Until finally at the end he gets in the middle of this giant fight between them and Mojo Jojo. And he's constantly being tossed around from the bad guy to the girls to the bad guy. And he's constantly holding the camera. So you're seeing all these interesting perspectives from like a Blair Witch Project standpoint. But they actually did it very well. It's very well directed. And that's the sort of creativity that I think needs to be in these types of shows. It constantly jumps genres. There's this episode where they're in the Old West. They don't bother giving you an explanation of why, like, the Powerpuff Girls are in the Old West or why everything is told, turned, like, old-timey. They just go with it. And they're completely, the, all their superpowers are pretty much old-timey sort of steampunk equipment. And I thought that was really neat. Just so many little tiny neat things that makes the geek and all of us go, wow. I salute you, the people who did this show, even though the only one I can remember is Laura Faust, even though she wasn't. Her husband was the one who created the show. We must all remember this. This is her husband. This is her. She was a story supervisor sometimes and whatever. But here's her husband. She, he did the show. But chances are, and this is just my theory, she probably said, Oh, honey, um, could you change this? And could you add this and add a little bit of... Could you add this here? Because let's face it. If you are married and you are married to somebody who's super creative, chances are your spouse's work is also going to show through in your work. True story. Ask George Lucas and his wife, one of the original editors of Star Wars, but you will never hear about her ever again because they're, they're divorced. So she gets no documentary credit whatsoever, that poor, poor woman. There's also a great episode that was written by Faust. We might as well pick out one that was actually created by her where the girls end up running into a supervillain. She's not really a supervillain more than she's just a regular villain. And they basically confront her about, you know, what she's doing and how it's wrong. And then she pulls off basically this feminist agenda, which is that, no, no, it's not really wrong. I'm just stealing money from the selfish, like, male masses. And she manages to convince them to, like, completely disown any men and be horrible towards them and everything and not to treat them with respect and to basically just, you know, treat the men like crap. And I thought it was a very funny episode. I thought the moral at the end of it was very interesting and very different where it ended up that they quoted, you know, the great feminine... God damn it. See, this is the point where I'm going to sound like a complete idiot because I can't remember her name. Um, the woman who started the whole thing, you know, the right to vote and everything, Susan, Susan Boyle. Damn it, I'm not going to edit this out. I don't believe in editing. Um, so anyways, they basically talk about it and they say, you know what, she believed in equality of the gender. She didn't necessarily believe in, you know, that women should like just beat the crap out of men. She believed that they should be equal as men. And thus, men should treat women with respect, and women should treat men with respect. But I'm kind of like, oh, that, that, that's a good angle to take it, because most of the men in this situation are basically treated as just kind of, you know, being normal people. The professor was being nice to them, and they were treating the professor like crap, and nobody should treat the professor like crap. He's, he's a great man. I, I admire him greatly. I admire his square jaw and his, his artistic look. So anyways, I've been muttering way too much about this, but if you want to check it out, almost all the episodes are on YouTube to some capacity, I've been noticing. Or you can TiVo it on, on Boomerang. It seems to be on all the time. It seems to be one of the Boomerang shows that they're probably never going to take off of there because, let's face it, everybody loves the Powerpuff Girls. I have a little bit of a hiccup thing going on, don't I? Those of you who see watching my videos that are recorded today, you'll notice that I go, look, Every so often, that seems to be like a little, little gaseous thing going on. So anyways, that'll be it for my recording session for this week. I'm trying to do this new thing, you see, where I record all of my videos all in one day. That way I can spend the rest of the nights doing marvelous things that I want to do and not worrying about recording a video. We will see how it works. So until then, I love my audience.